Oh! Yummy! Have your breakfast, my dear Toad Prince. Eyes closed, mouth open. Hmm. Should we keep going here? If I consume that, it puts it in graveyard for Aussie. Okay, so Nuggle Far will definitely get me Rackus Behemoth. Heads or tails? I don't really mind, man. I'll let you choose. You're the one paying the points, dude. Um, you get preference. As my dear valued viewer. So we got three, six. This. Chimera actually works now. Osril for short round. Heat wave. Ah, I don't know how good heat wave is really in this match. They're not going so tall. We can we can even swarm in the next round. Chimera again. Oh, really? No way. <laughs> They miss so many. Yo, that was some straight magic, man. I'm pushing it. Hey, what's up, legends? Welcome back to another deck guide. Before we get into today's list, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please take the time to do so now. My next objective is to reach 10,000 subscribers. Really appreciate your help and support in achieving that goal. For today, I've come around to an Arrakis Swarm list. And why is that? Because the Andrega Warriors, they got a buff recently. So we're going to cover the buff and how these cards work now. Basically, they play for a little bit more value than before. And can help us with the management of the amount of units we wish to have on a row at a time. Because we can hold Insectoids once consuming insectoids this card gains charges obviously as you can see here but anyway we're going to get into that very soon so leader ability is a rack of swarm like i said order spawn a drone on an allied row five charges whenever you play an organic card spawn drone on a random allied row as well so drone is this one powered insectoid unit that you see here the way we look to use our leader ability will be in combination with in particular spontaneous evolution so you can use a leader charge and then play evolution onto it swarm more drones that way in some cases you know at the end of the match we can save one leader charge to work with arendite damaging the opponent's unit and then boosting a drone up so we don't go too tall on our other units perhaps it's another line we could take and the rest of the way we look to synergize leader would be in combination with chimeras and arrakis behemoth as well so you're going to try to look to use leader sparingly and i suggest it would come out round two or three magic lamp is the stratagem that i've gone with we get this five power token unit that you see here this is when we go first because we are swarming quite a lot of units i mean there is a consideration that you could go with this stratagem as well if you like because you get to boost an allied unit by five and it offers a bit more row space it's up to you you could play either one or the other see what works better for you in your matches 
So what I'm going to do is run you through this list bottom up, explain how best to play each card, when to play it during a match, and then we're going to discuss how to execute the strategy for this deck. So to begin with, we've got two Andrega Eggs. So with the Andrega Eggs, they're a Deathwish unit. We will be looking to activate this card through the use of the Andrega Warriors. Spawn three drones in this row is the Deathwish ability. Once again, that's those Insectoid units that you see there. What we wish to do really is save these cards to be played together. So you play Andrega Eggs together with Andrega Warrior. So we have one of each, oh, pardon me, we have two of each of those copies. So that's the fashion you can play them in. In some cases, you can have two Andrega Eggs together and play one Andrega Warrior between them. So there's a few different ways to play these cards out. These cards we're looking to utilize to help swarm drones to work with Chimera and Arrakis Behemoth in particular. So you can definitely take one Andrega Warrior, one Andrega Egg with you, round one if you like, or just save those cards as combinations later on, perhaps even in shorter round scenarios when Chimera's Adrenaline is active, so you got more tokens to boost up and swarm with. So with Andrega Warrior, this card got a change. Deploy, consume your adjacent units for each consumed insectoid gain one charge zil order spawn a drone on this road so you actually have one charge to begin with which is pretty nice so this card's already giving us a drone which can work, work with some of our synergies in this deck so the benefit now with this card is that before when we'd be consuming our insectoids maybe we over swarm a row and we lose value on some of these the spawning synergies spawning of drones but like this we can kind of hold the charges and offload them as we have more space and kind of manage the 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 row space more effectively perhaps putting some other units on that row we might need okay so it definitely has given more support to this kind of a leader in my opinion we have spores to give our deck some control and balance of what it can do reset the power of a unit so this is to deal with boosted units that's what you're going to be targeting with this something with a power which has been added on to its base power okay so this is a good card to have in this deck because it's an organic card which synergizes with the leader when we play spores you not only get to reset the unit that you target with this you also get to spawn a drone token unit bear in mind with spores we can also use it defensively to reset the power of some of our units that might have been damaged down in particular you could consider resetting griffin if it gets damaged down a lot and also spear tip that's a pretty good option as well so you just save this to be used as you need to we've got a few different control options in this deck double arrakis nest organic card so we're spawning drones when we play this as well spawn four drones in an allied row the token units that you see there we look to use Arrakis Nest in combination to be played with the Chimeras in particular and also Arrakis Behemoth. So for that matter, because of the way Chimera works with the Adrenaline, maybe we wish to save Arrakis Nest, Spontaneous Evolution, those kind of cards to be played round two and three in shorter round scenarios. And kind of round one, we can play more of a point slammy fashion. So swarming round two, three, point slam round one. So to capitalize on the amount of swarming we're going to be doing, we've got Chimeras in this deck. Deploy, consume an allied unit. Adrenaline five, boost all copies of consumed unit in that unit's row by one. So the way to make Chimera play for max value, of course, you're going to play it in that adrenaline range. And what we want to do is row stack, kind of have a row clear to spawn all of our drones on it. So like I said, we can use Leader, Spontaneous Evolution, Arrakis Nest, target one row to spawn all those drones there. And then we can play Chimera for the Adrenaline. And Chimeras can be played out round two or round three if you like. Then we have two Griffins. So Griffins are actually kind of safe to play for deploy in our deck because we are spawning the one power drone units. The way Griffin works is that on deploy when we play it, we have to destroy an allied unit on this row if there are no targets to destroy self. So you don't play Griffin until you see a one-powered 
insectoid drone unit on the board and what we can do is play griffin round one onto that unit which will then later set on mamuna to play the other griffin from deck so two griffins one we're playing round one the other one we're always keeping in deck for mamuna to thin out and play the way i suggest we play griffin a really nice way to play it would be to utilize the drone that gets spawned from crimson curse end round one it'll just be one random floating drone that's a pretty good option in some cases you could target Wispest tribute but for the most part try to do a, um, some kind of a swarm where you can generate one token drone and play the griffin out that way so next up we've got spontaneous evolution spontaneous evolution is organic card as well we've got two of these so these will be spawning drones for us as well as we play this card out what we're looking to do is play it for the insectoid condition that you can see there spawn three drones on the boosted units row and we also get to boost it by four so it's a nice value play and it helps us to swarm more of these drones to work with chimera and arrakis behemoth in our list spontaneous evolution is nice to save with the rest of our swarming strat round two and three as i suggested obviously it's going to depend on your hand how it's looking and you got to play that way too maybe round one you do a bit of swarming you know depends on how you draw we have old spear tip asleep in this deck to help with our deck's consistency uh it gives us points to get round control and will also help set up osril for a good consume at the end of the match so we're looking to use old spear tip asleep as a proactive play into round one as an opener you could play this out first thing if you like ensuring you do that as long as th this other copy is in deck so we want old spear tip in our deck at all times and then we can play this out because the way this card works is that basically what we have to know is after three turns this card banishes and its power goes into old spear tips power this gets thinned out from our deck and becomes an 18 powered unit and then that can remain in our graveyard at the end of the match for Osral to consume for a really big point slam. Okay, so nice way to get round control, um, increase our deck consistency. And bear in mind, if this card gets damaged, what happens is that it banishes immediately. And then this card gets thinned out to the board right away. So this is the card that's going to get thinned out from our deck. Always keep it in your deck. Try, try to do this as early as possible in a match to thin as early as possible it's the best way to play it we've got the beast in here at the end of your turn if this unit is not the unit with the highest power on the battlefield boost it by two so we do have a bit of a point slam fashion so boost um the beast can kind of make sense it kind of makes most sense to play the beast with old spear tip asleep spear tip and mamuna so try to save it for those times because obviously mamuna is going to go a bit tall and obviously old spear tip becoming an 18 powered unit works pretty good for the beast too doesn't it and then naturally the opponent will have tall units in some matches so that's pretty good for us the beast can be played anytime try to reserve it to be played with those cards it's a nice card to commit round one to help get round control as well so with osril we're looking to play osril at the end of a match range draw to consume a unit from our graveyard and the best possible target will be old spear tip hopefully at 18 base power which gives us a really strong short round potential with this deck of course if the opponent has units in their graveyard and something happened with your spear tip play sure target the opponent's graveyard playing this melee row as well P perhaps you even want to do that with osril just to remove some very strong units they may replay later in the match so Osril's kind of like a squirrel, but much stronger as well in some kind of cases. So Whispers Tribute, deep play arranged, play an organic card from your deck. The way I like to play Whispers Tribute is to ensure Crimson Curse. But you know, don't worry, we've got a few backup plays here. You've got Arrakis Nest, you got Spores, you have Spontaneous Evolution. So this card's never really going to brick. It's a nice way to help ensure we get round control. So round one, definitely feel free to play Whispers Tribute, Crimson Curse. Pretty good point value play. Helps with establishing value for Arendite. 
Um, yeah, and thins out the deck, so pretty nice. Toad Prince for control. We look to play this card Melly Row, so maybe you want to consider when we're swarming our side of the board with drones, we want to swarm range throw sometimes when we're looking to play Toad Prince in a round. But we do have Kyberis to open up board space as well. Anyway, we're deploying this Melly Row. Consume a unit with four or less power. Balances our deck out. So we have Point Slam. We have Tempo. Plays with a Swarm. And we have some control in different, different forms with Toad Prince here and our other cards. Arrakis. Oh, with Toad Prince, you can kind of use this anytime. Maybe you want to use Toad Prince round one or two. Because in shorter round situations, you might not be as certain that the opponent will have something effective to target. You don't want to brick Toad Prince, really. So moving on to Arrakis Behemoth. Deploy is spawn two drones and boost all other insectoids in this row by one. So these are the drones here once again. The best way to play Arrakis Behemoth, really, is to swarm drones through Arrakis Nest, spontaneous evolution, onto a single row. And then you just place Arrakis Behemoth on that row. And if you want, you can offload a few leader charges onto the row where you're going to play Arrakis Behemoth just to get max value point play if we didn't have a full row already through playing Behemoth out. So it would be nice to save Arrakis Behemoth round two or three when we're looking to swarm with Chimeras. For some more consistency, we've got Nugglefar. Look at two random gold cards from your deck, then play one, place the other on top. Because of Nugglefar's random aspect, I believe most of the time it's better played round two when you're a bit more certain what you're likely to pull into with it. It's actually quite a good card in some senses because it allows us to look at random gold cards, which is nice for us because we're playing some specials such as Heatwave and Arendite. So yeah, be a bit careful with it. I would suggest we play it out round two the latest just to ensure we get all our golds by the end of the match. Then we've got Arendite in this deck to add a bit of control. Echo, so we get to play it twice. Arendite feels pretty good in our list because we've got some high tempo plays and it's a deck where we want to bleed the opponent too. So we do, we can get quite a lot of value out of Arendite, I find, by the end of the match if we take the right line in a match. So we get the damage and enemy unit by zero. This is how the card starts. Then boost the lowest powered allied unit by the excess damage dealt. At the end of your turn, if you have more points than your opponent, increase the damage by one wherever this card is. So that's kind of what we want to ensure, right, with our deck. We want to ensure round one, we, we get our high tempo plays out, old spear tip, the beast, swarm a bit, crimson curse with Wispest tribute, you know, get fire ahead of the opponent with points, same in round two. Let's make Erendite as big as possible. And like I said, if you want to reserve a leader charge, at the end of the match, before you play Arendite, you can boost the drone up so your other units don't go too tall. But anyway, I'm sure we're going to have drones at that time because we're swarming so much with this deck. So basically, the idea is that you just want to let this build up as much as possible. And I mean, sometimes, let's say you're using the final charge in round three. Maybe you wish to answer a unit right away or you want this card to just grow. It's really up to you, depending on the kind of unit that the opponent plays maybe you want to answer something immediately and you don't care getting more value you know it really depends on what you're going to see so we got crimson curse organic card when we play crimson curse we're spawning a drone because organic spawn blood moon on an emmy row for five turns spawn two ekimaras in the opposite row that's this vampire token unit that you see here two of them which is pretty good um very good value play Crimson Curse can definitely be a card for round one to get, help get us round control. Probably playing it round two the latest because we want to bleed with this deck. In a short round, it's a bit awkward. We may not get full value out of this card. And bear in mind, before you play this card out, we want to make sure the opponent has stacked a sufficient amount of units on a particular row so we can get the full bleeding and damage value out of this card. And like I said, I like to kind of play Whisper's Tribute to ensure Crimson Curse. So if you've got Whisper's Tribute in hand, just tuck Crimson Curse back into the deck. For some more control, we've got Heat Wave, Banish a unit or an artifact. So I've added this in here to deal with scenario cards. I still see Knights, Knight decks played. I still see Harmony decks played. 
So we kind of need a bit of a balance of what we can do. But of course, if your opponent has a strong unit, you can target that with this and save this at the end of the match if you like. So we've covered old spear tip. We are leaving this card in deck at all times for old spear tip asleep to thin out. And then we've just got Mamuna here. Mamuna offers us a high tempo play and also thins out the deck. Zeal order ability, banish a bronze unit from your graveyard. Boost off by its power and summon a copy of it from your deck to this row. Be aware that if we do this on Sabbath, we actually play the copy instead. We kind of want to avoid that. Okay, so with Mamuna, what we're doing is, like I said, we don't play Mamuna until we've set up Griffin in Graveyard. So that's why I said it's very important. Round one, we play Griffin onto a drone. Griffin is now in Graveyard. The other copy of the Griffin, we always leave in deck. And then what we can do round two on the bleed is open up with Mamuna. Banishing Griffin in graveyard, thinning other Griffin out from deck. It's a, it's quite a high tempo and high value play, which makes Arendite even better for us, and can put us far ahead on, of the opponent points wise. Could really help us two zero in some cases. So try to avoid Sabbath because then we have to play the Griffin, which, I mean, it's not super risky because we're swarming lower powered units, but we don't want to do that in this case. Just play this card for the thinning value. So round two card. I believe this should be because it thins the deck once again, it's thinning an, a griffin from deck. So now that we've covered the list, let me explain our execute strategy for this deck. This deck has a bleed emphasis. Pretty much you want to 2-0 the opponent with this or make the rounds as short as possible during match. So like get round control, push really hard round two and make round three very short. I think that's the best way to play this list. We kind of want to avoid going long rounds because we're swarming maybe there's a potential we kind of over swarm our side of the board and it's just a deck that gets a lot of value making the opponent commit some good cards bleeding good cards out of the opponent that's that's how i feel this list works so in saying that your your round one plays could be as follows you can play old spear tip asleep to thin out old spear tip you can certainly play out the beast you can play whispers tribute into crimson curse you can play toad we could play griffin pretty much let's do point slam round one let's say that's enough to get us round control what we can do then into round two is bleed and we're going to rely round two and three on the use of the swarming part of this deck so into round two you know you can synergize spontaneous evolution arrakis nest with leader in combination with arrakis behemoth we can play out chimeras if we like we can play out and drag a warrior and drag our eggs all those kinds of cards you can use one arendite charge mamuna so like is it like you can see there's a lot of points in these combinations so if the 2-0 looks like it's there definitely go for it if you're far ahead of the opponent but if not we do have short round three potential you can pass and for a short round three let's say you can reserve one remaining charge of arendite You've got Osril for a big point slam and whatever else you don't have left. Okay, so that's kind of the line of play we want to take with this list. So I hope you have fun playing this and good luck with your matches. Yeah, it could swarm round one, why not? This is pretty good in this match. Right. Do we have Indrega eggs? No, we don't. Nuggle far for consistency. We have Spear Tip to thin, Mamuna to thin. We got a few different thinning options. Hold on, this is V. Isn't it? What's Nuggle file gonna pull me if I click it now? It's it's really uh a bit too sketchy for me to play that now. Uh... It's a V deck, isn't it? 
I got spores. We can play Crimson Curse here. Back rows, maybe it's not bad. Back row too. Actually, no, it's going to be damaging those. Not that good. I think we get melee row with it. Is this a V deck? Don't think so? No worries, Zeros. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. 2020. <laughs> uh, I've been seeing a few. So it's just a Death Wish deck and they're playing Corn. Round one. For an opener. It's, isn't that a big commitment then? If they're playing it like that? Like it's putting them in a good spot against me for sure though. Chimeras for Adrenaline 5. We have to work into it. Spores could go there. Could go Chimera. Yeah, true. Pass on five? Passing now, do we get the pass? They've played some pretty good tempo, man. Wow. Seriously. Okay, so if they get another bleeding, I'm sure they will. All right, here we go, man. It's a draw. Let's go. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude. Griffin? I probably don't want it really. Aaron Diet? Yeah, probably keep. Swarm, we got a lot of swarming here. Um, we got a lot of swarming. Oh. You wouldn't want What are our golds in there? Would you? When would we hit Nugglefar like now? Or I wait till till the units go a bit taller. We want to stay ahead on points too, though, that's the thing. Um What do they got in there? So Toad gets replayed from opponent's graveyard. Extra Death Wish activator. I don't really have anything good anyway. I don't have my graveyard set up anyway. It's probably the heat wave, huh? Right. Just let Aaron Dyke grow. Now we could probably go Nuggle Far. If I get Toad, we're only consuming an Insectoid. Beast is pretty good.
pretty much just swarming now at this point. That's all I have left. We just swarm the Andrega eggs. The warrior. Just let uh, Aaron Dyke grow tall. That's good for us. That's pretty weak for them, really. What? I don't know if that's effective from them. Honestly. Shouldn't have done that. Should have held. They should have held heat wave. What? Scorch. Oh, this this is a pretty big tempo. We should be alright though. Maybe we can play this here for a proactive play. Yeah, Weavers. <laughs> the rat girl. Oh, you just like a rat clog. Next, <laughs> yeah, I never really played that style. I'll see. <laughs> yeah, no more space. Yeah, that's what happens, man. Okay. So, we consume. Offload charges. Uh, we can play... Griffin to consume one. Oh, Calvate. Right. Actually, to Toad could be really good to counter Hefty Helga. There's, there's definitely a thought about that. Maybe I'm keeping to... What's up Baron, how are you man? I did see him streaming that like a while back, maybe a week or two ago. Jousting? Okay, I think they're just getting prepared to... To kind of pass here. Well, then I don't really want to play Whispers. I don't really want to play my better stuff. But anyway. They could go later there. Yeah, I'm just trying it out now. And if I insert a needle here, what then? They've given us spying stuff. Oh, so they will go coup there, maybe. Chimera active now. So I might overswarm me if I play this. How many? Got three, six. I think I do this anyway. And I can hit Chimera there. Arendite's growing. It's nice. Oh, right. So if they've given that spying, uh, could they have like Terra Nova? Because they wanted to commit that. Hello, what's up my friend? Pretty good, how about yourself? 
yeah, true. Um, soldiers could counter this pretty hard with all the pings. If I play Sleeping Spear Tip, it might just get seized from leader. Ooh, this is a nice swarm hand. Maybe I'm just slamming this from hand. Um, what do we got? Yeah, I got Griffin in there. Griffin in deck. So, in that case, we're doing this. Eight to nine? Okay, this is really good for Arendite. I like it. Arendite's growing. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I like to do those kinds of tricks, Baron. But you never know. Sometimes they don't fall for it. So maybe I just slam from hand here. Okay. What is truth if not an illusion? Do I enjoy torture? Perhaps. A bit. Right. We can wait a bit before I hit Wispess. I know I could consume with Toad, but I'm really worried about Hefty Helga. Because they can generate a lot of pings of damage, kind of counter my swarming. We gotta work around treason, maybe. So we could definitely go for the swarm now. One hundred percent. Let's have a look. Yeah, Toad for Helga. I think I want to play it like that. What do you guys reckon? Yeah, that's a good line, Baron, for sure. That's how I usually like to play it. Suffering a noble's friend will be a count once I'm done with you. Right. Their veil is a very good counter back there. I would play Crimson Curse if it wasn't for the Veil. Maybe here, front row. <laughs> We're gonna do it. I like Toad because it just straight up consumes. You don't have to worry about shield or anything. Consumer unit with four of the spell. Whoa! Oh my gosh! Man, lucky they didn't have something to work into it with. Okay, this is good tempo. Chimera's probably okay to go. Seven, eight. Could offload leader there too. Leader Melero. Oh. Mistake stars reflected in upon Oh wow. Well. <laughs> Maybe it kinda helped me a bit here. Double mama. <laughs> yeah. I'm not playing Bone Talismans. This is a different style. I've done all that before. Yeah, a Drago Warrior now has a charge. So it plays for higher value than before. Like, it has one charge, and then you can gain more. Ooh. Let's keep pushing hard. Actually, not there. Maybe. Yeah. Seven P not organic. Yeah, true. It can can be good. I have tried it. Before. I've tried a lot of different styles. Tried like the the board boost with yen, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's just good to experiment, man. See what works. Resist. 
resistance shall not be tolerated. Really? So what do we got up there? How big's Aaron Bait? Oh, it's on 13. I could also, like, boost Griffin. Oh, Sergeant's points. Um... Just get all the good cards out of them. Maybe I'm keeping Toad on his pass. What's up, B? How are you? <laughs> That's a pretty big damn uh, Griffin. As good as dead, that lot. <laughs> oh, what a pass. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a pass, man. Nice. So good. I reckon that's so frustrating for them. Must be very frustrating. We're gonna hope to pull out gold, so that's the only thing. I'm sure we'll get some good cards now. Oh, we got it out! Oh! Yes! Yes! That's good, man. Okay. Toad, Toad Prince for Hefty Helga. It's got to be in there. It has to be in there. Yes! Yes! Give me Heat Wave, Arundite, or Arrakis Behemoth. Yes! Oh, I don't f Um. Uh. I got a leader, man. Three, four, five. It's good value play, dude. Yo, it's good talk. Gotcha, gotcha, puppy. Ooh. All right. Um. So, we swarm first. Maybe we do, man. So it's gonna be three, six. So we don't want to go taller with our power level right now. I don't know what's what's the best way to play this. Do we Aaron diet now? Maybe it is, man. Aaron diet um the six. Sees.
And slave six. What have they used for control? Vilgeforts. Yeah, I think. Uh... Maybe it's all right. Can't believe I didn't see Hefty Helga. Well, wow. I was really holding um, Toad Prince. Oh! Oh, man. It's, it's gonna have to be either... Either the Enslave or the Soldiers. But Imprisonment Bold, that one that I made was devastating, man. That got me two ranks. I flew with that deck. So it, it would definitely be something out of the Nilfgaard buffs, in my opinion. All our stuff's just gonna get locked up, man. Double, double locks. Can we bait out locks? Yeah, maybe. Could purify. Yeah, true, true. But it would be a very interesting use of the card, right? Maybe that makes that use even better. Like it maximizes the value of that card. Think about it. Think about like damaging Piggy and spawning it on your side, something like that. Yeah, slave set, man. Go and slave six. Just go all out with um, Stefan. That's the way. A fine vintage. You would have made. Uh, a fine vintage. May may wait a bit more. This perfect ranged. This goes melee row. Uh, I, I'm just very uh. This this will just get locked, man. Instantly. Oh. We conquered Gesso. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yo, it's Seahill. Imprisonment. Rip. <laughs> Rip, KG. Nice one, bro. You tried. <laughs> Couldn't make it work today. <laughs> oh, no chance, man. Well, we are going low with the units, though. Swarming later. <laughs> no way. <laughs> A secret compartment. Delightful. <laughs> We're still gonna hold it, maybe. Whatever. Let's see how we go. You're dead. <laughs> Oh, this is a really hard match for us. Let's see if I can work around it. We'll see. I'm not easily intimidated. I'll have you know. Get your sunset out. Yeah, let, let's see how high they can get it. Yeah, true, true. Back in line. None can match the power of Nilfgaard. <laughs> oh, um. All right, let's have a look. Nugglefar. 
This will just get locked too. See hill five. What's good, Sully? How are you? I got round control. Okay. And? Oh, they got a Nero in there. We are going to need some damn good cards. Dites are eight. Uh... Like that's sick, man. But I don't have the um, the freaking Griffin. If I had a Griffin set, it would have been really good. So try to bleed, I guess. See what happens. Just keep working on Aaron diet. Well, I'm gonna try something, man. One benefit in this is that even though Aaron diet's gone huge, we're we're kind of swarming wide. You know what I mean? In some cases, could be a heat wave target. So if I'm going Nuggle far, it's getting me like spear tip. These will just get deleted. Uh, okay. Would that be the best heat wave target in this match for us? Maybe. Wow, that's cracked. That's really cracked, man. Yeah, that's great value. That is really good value, man, that play. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Okay. Do you own What do we get it on? We need to do this for Osral though. Next. <laughs> that damn card. Painful. Did they just burn a card? No. Oh, they heat wave the spear tip. Right. I got left in there. What use is Mamuna? What's Mamuna really gonna do? I'm happy to see it out. 
Oh my god. Mamuna just getting me like uh and trigger warrior and trigger egg. <laughs> this is, I got flogged in this one. So bad man. Aaron died's big, but like what's our best bet really? Yeah, bad matchup. Probably don't even care about going tall. Whatever. Let's see, man. We can float that. Let them give us drones. We pull out an Entrega Warrior. That's it. Yeah, uh, Nilfgaard's very strong this season, Sully. I definitely recommend it to everyone. If you're looking to climb and all that, rank up pro, yeah. No doubt about it, man. Easily. No that's, honestly, it's very smart because the card is, plays for great value right now. So, it's a smart way to play this, what they're doing. They could lock it now. Go Sea Hill, whatever. If you want to do good, play those cards, man. Right. <laughs> I couldn't do it this time, Ash. Oh, see here at 10, 11 now. Oh, true. Yeah, you can play it a lot of times, so. huh? Just get rid of the assimilate engine. Wow, they can consume back there. Oh, I banished. No. Yes, they can with that. Oh, well played. Well played. Nice, man. Should be a gold. Perfect match for Sea Hill, eh? 